guys, it's Anissa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am doing my Shop My Stash for the month of November, which is definitely probably my longest and biggest Shop My Stash of the year thus far. I'm trying to get through all of my makeup that I have in my collection by the end of this month. That way I can tie it up and do a Best of Beauty for 2021 for you guys. If you guys have never seen these videos from me, pretty much what I do is I shop my makeup collection with you guys for the month and rotate new makeup out for me to use. And then the second part of the video, I sit down and kind of do a chit chat and get ready with me and just update you guys on things that have happened to me within the past month. I'm super excited for you guys to see how I came up with this look and also to see the makeup that I picked for the month. So if you're interested, make sure to keep on watching. But before you go any further, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I post on this channel every four days, so you never have to miss me for too long. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. Guys, I am so excited to pick new makeup for this month. This is the first time that I have been over my makeup. That's how much I have used all these products. We're going to go ahead and get started. And I am actually going to revert back to how I was doing it before. If you watched my shop my stash from last month, I did do it a little bit differently. I'm getting ready to film my Sephora haul, so that's why all this crap is back here. These drawers look a little bit emptier than they did when I picked out my makeup, because if I didn't like a product, I just went ahead and got rid of it. Like, there's no point in me keeping it in here if I don't like it. Pretty much everything is getting rotated. There's like a couple products that I wanna try out just a little bit more, but for the most part, I feel like I have a really good idea of what I like and what I do not like. Start in the primer drawers, Elf, acne fighting petty primer i have actually only gotten to try this once in a full face of first impression this is the green one i am such a big fan of the petty primers i tried the tatcha one last month because these are supposed to be a dupe for those and honestly guys i literally see no difference between the petty primers and the tatcha one so i went ahead and got rid of that one i'll try to give you guys little mini updates if i can think of anything like that as Fenty beauty pro filter instant retouch primer once again this is such a unique formula it's like half lotion half gel type of formula. Considering that it is high end, I do try to be a little bit of a harsher critic with my higher end products because I do have a lot of drugstore primers that I really love. And usually if I do get rid of a high end primer, it's because I didn't like it or there is a drugstore primer that does the exact same thing. MAC Mineralized Charged Water Moisture Gel. I have only used this one time in a full face of first impressions. The hoops that I went through to get this product is insane. Lastly, for our higher end primers, this is the Hourglass Mineral Veil mini version of this primer. Every time I've used this primer, it kind of has like a bluish type of tint to it. I don't know if it's because it has SPF in it or what. Oh yeah, it does have SPF in it, so maybe that's why it has that type of tint. This also is more of a lotion type of texture. For my drugstore products, I'm going to be using the CoverGirl True Blend Base Business Skin Primer, and this is the pore minimizing one. Only tried this once. I really have not tried a whole lot from CoverGirl. I have tried their foundation, and I have tried their concealer. The True Blend foundation is actually the very first foundation that I remember using besides the Maybelline Fit Me. Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer 12 Hour Makeup Grip. This is supposed to be a dupe for one of my all-time faves, the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Morphe 2 Total Softy Gel Moisturizer. I bought this at the Morphe store in Chicago and I absolutely loved the way that it worked with the foundation that I was using. I really have never been a huge fan of Morphe 2, but I have never heard anybody talk about this product. I like to use hydrating primers that are more jelly-based because I feel like they're a little bit more oily skin friendly. Everything else that you're seeing in these primer drawers, I know how I feel about it. I know if I like it. So that's the goal is to get through all these drawers by the end of this month and pull stuff. That way I can use December to trying products that I want to mention in my best of beauty, my favorites and stuff like that because I've been trying new makeup all freaking year. So I'm so excited to just be able to just pull makeup that I absolutely love next month. These are the only primers that I'm like not sure about. Everything else I have, I love. I feel like once I start to get my makeup figured out, I buy more. I don't know why. These two primers are not new. These three are. I didn't even know that I pulled these. I completely forgot because I kind of keep all my eye products in this little bin right here and I think it's really easy for me to lose them. These two are not new. I pulled this one last month. This is the Morphe Eyelid Primer in Translucent Cover Girl Lid Lockup Eyeshadow Primer. These ones are new for the month. Next Ultimate Shadow and Liner Primer and this is in the color Medium. I tried this actually I think last week. A full face of first impression. 
Legends. It doesn't have great coverage, but it does give kind of a nice sticky base. So I was a little shocked when I tried it because it does have color to it, but it really doesn't do much correcting. If I just feel like it's really good at like sticky and tackiness, I will honestly probably get rid of it only because I have another NYX eyeshadow primer that I like that does the exact same thing. Elf Putty Eye Primer in the color Clay. I have not used this in a hot minute. I saved it from a full face of makeup that I'm getting rid of because I gave it a second chance. Also only tried this once. This is the Rare Beauty Eye Primer and I've heard really good things about this. Give me a second because this is like overloading me right now. I'm gonna have to figure something else out and I'll be right back. Okay, I figured out what I wanna do. I'm gonna put my eye primers right by my face primers and then we'll move this airspun powder here in a second. Okay, we are on foundation overload right now. I actually only pulled one drugstore foundation because I know that I like all of these. So uh, this foundation drawer, if you could believe it or not, actually had all of these in it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I picked really quickly. Talk about these three all together because I'm kind of pulling them for the same reasons. First one right here is the It Cosmetics CC Color Correcting Full Coverage Cream. This is in the color Rich Honey. Derma Blend Continuous Correction Full Coverage Cream and this is in the color 50N. Derma Blend Flawless Creator Multi-Use Liquid Pigments and this is in the color 50W. I've tried them but they're all too light for me so I really never use these on their own. I only use them as mixers and I cannot return them and get the correct shade because it's been too long and I suck at doing that. Too Faced Born This Way Matte Undetectable Super Long Wear Foundation and I have this in the color Chestnut. I absolutely love the natural version of this and I honestly was not the biggest fan of this initially as I was of the other one. Keep in mind I've only tried this once. If I end up not liking this as much as I like the natural one then I don't see a point in keeping this. I thought that this was the new version of it because I did a side-by-side -side comparison of this one and the old one. It used to be one of my favorites of all time, but I'm only gonna keep it if it's something that I absolutely love because I can't even talk about this in videos because this formula is discontinued. I personally like this formula over the new formula. Probably the most expensive piece of makeup I own. This is the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Foundation in the color 10 Chestnut. I remember buying this during last year's VIB sale because I would never pay full price for this. If she doesn't work wonders, then she's gotta go because for a foundation to be $100 and come in a plastic bottle, but it's more about what's inside the package. MAC Studio Fix Fluid SPF 15 in the color NC47. MAC Studio Fix Tech Cream to Powder Foundation also in the color NC47. Every time I've used them, they've been all right, so I just wanna keep using them. This is the most recent foundation that I have tried. This is the NYX Born to Glow Naturally Radiant Foundation, and I have the color Cappuccino. I used this in my fall makeup tutorial, and it was absolutely stunning. Let's see if she can do it again. Woma Beauty Say What Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation, and this is in the color 2N Brown Sugar. This is the foundation that the lady used on me in the Morphe store with that Morphe 2 Jelly Moisturizer. I would usually pull a stick foundation, but I have already tried all of my stick foundations. I know how I feel about them. We've got lots of concealer. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the pot concealers because there's only three of those. Bare Minerals Correcting Concealer in the color Dark 2. By the way, I use these pot concealers to carve out the bottom of my brows. So it's a very creamy formula, but I really have never paid attention to how much coverage it has. And I do like to make sure that my pot concealers have good coverage because I do want my brows to be very clean. Also, I've only used this once. This is the MAC Studio Finish Concealer in the color NC45. Laura Mercier Secret concealer for under eyes in the shade number four. And this also is very creamy, but again, I wanna see how much coverage it has. I'm kinda of just gonna name these concealers off unless I have something that I specifically want to say about them. Chart Shape Contour Concealer, and I have the colors 53 in Deep and 47S Tan Deep Sand. I have a video comparing the creamy formula to this formula, and apparently I liked this formula better because it's the one that I kept. I actually used to love Tarte Shape Tape when everybody else loved Tarte Shape Tape, and then and kind of fell off the bandwagon because I found things that I liked better. So I wanna see if she still holds a place in my heart or not. I wanna say I pulled this concealer a couple months ago and when I pulled it, oh my gosh, I could not stop using it. But then I realized that the formula is kind of matte, if I remember correctly, which is something that I don't hate in a concealer, but I'd rather have a natural finish. High coverage liquid concealer in the color Coffee. I'm so excited to get my hands in this. This is the Woma Beauty Stay Woke Concealer in the color Brown Sugar T2. This had such good coverage when I used it in the video that I tried it, Full Face of Indie Brand Makeup. I am so, so excited to use this some more, and I hope that it has the same coverage that it did 
did then. These are my Maybelline Fit Me concealers in the color 30 and 40. This one I can't say I'm too excited to try only because it did not work very well the first time I tried it. This is the NYX Born to Glow Radiant Concealer. This is in the color Caramel. I liked the foundation way more than this. I'm wondering if it just was a bad combo, if there was something weird going on that day, balled up under the eyes really weird. I'm gonna see if it does the same thing again. I'm gonna mention these two together because I kind of am pulling them for the same reason. Fenty Pro Filter Concealer. This is in the color 360 and then this is the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer in the color Warm Honey. These both also have more matte finishes. This is more of just a preference thing. I have found that I like the way that natural concealers set a little bit better than matte concealers. Not that I hate it, but it's just my preference as of recently. KVD Locket Concealer, and this is in the color D33 Warm. It's supposed to have really good coverage, so we're gonna see what is up with it. Also supposed to have really good coverage is the Huda Beauty The Overachiever Concealer, and this is in the color Peanut Butter. I'm pretty skeptical about this concealer because I just decluttered the foundation that goes with this. This is the Il Maquillage F I'm Flawless Multi-Use Perfecting Concealer, and I am in the color 13 and a half. The reason I decluttered the foundation and the primer, these products are so freaking expensive and I have foundations that work way better and are way cheaper. So I want to see if this is worth keeping. Pat McGrath Lab Sublime Perfecting Concealer in the color MD23. We're going out of order, but I also meant to pull the foundation because I honestly really do not know how I feel about this. These products are very like high luxury type black owned, which we love, but you're not getting cut any slack because you're black owned. You still need to be good if you are expensive and if you're affordable. Clinique Even Better All Over Concealer and Eraser and this is in the color Deep Honey. I absolutely love and adore the foundation as you guys can see. This is one of my like OG favorites. We've ran into a little bit of a problem. These are all the powders that I'm like Mm, not so sure about. The only one I wanted to keep for this month was the Reflecting Setting Powder, the loose one in the color Sunstone. Sit here and debate for a little bit and pick some of these. And pretty much what I'm gonna do is if I end up not liking one of them, they will be replaced by one of the products out of this pile that I didn't choose to be in the drawer automatically. Also, same thing if I'm using a powder for a couple days in a row and I really like it, I'm gonna rotate it out. That way I can use one of the products that didn't get picked. I have the colored powders that are loose translucent and then pressed powders. Jacqueline, um, Jaclyn under eye powder and this is in the color brightening apricot. I pulled this recently and I still can't remember how I felt about it. Essence My Skin Perfector Loose Fixing Powder Instant Blur Effect in the color 30 medium. Me and this powder. When I tell you guys the go rounds we've had, this is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder in the color 30 Medium Deep. I have tried this in so many different colors. I have tried it in so many different combinations. And for some reason, we're still just like, meh. But it's not bad. Hard Candy Chilling Wonder Powder, and this is supposed to be a hydrating formula. I feel like this would be good with like a mattifying concealer just because it is supposed to be like a more hydrating powder. I have tried the pink top one that I just mentioned to you guys, and it is it's decent. It has a little bit of flashback, but it does a good job at smoothing. Morphe Bake and Set Setting Powder in the color Translucent. I don't even remember what I used this with, but it wasn't a full face of first impressions. I'm actually a really big fan of pretty much everything I tried from Morphe. Their concealer is one of my favorites. Ciate London Everyday Vacay Coconut Setting Powder. This is all right. For a little bit, I didn't like it for whatever reason. I think really because it was coconut and I could not get over the scent. Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Loose Setting Powder. And I also just used this in my last full face of first impressions. Then on Suppressed Powder. This is the Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. This is just supposed to be something that you can use underneath the eyes to kind of brighten the face up. Next Can't Stop Won't Stop Mattifying Powder in the color Mocha. This did a good job of smoothing and it had decent coverage, so I always love when I can find a good affordable powder for you guys. This is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Smooth Operator Finishing Powder, and this is in the color Deep. I really felt like this was a really good finishing powder, like exactly what it says. Lastly, this is one of the very first, if not the first ever high-end pressed powder that I ever bought. Lancome Dual Finish Pressed Powder in the color 550 Suede C. I just gotta see if this color works for me, because if not, then we're gonna have to get rid of her like there's no reason to hang on to her although I do really really love the Lancome foundation okay next is blush bronzer and highlighter I think that I can fit most of these highlighters in here but all these are definitely not gonna be able to fit so I'm gonna narrow my categories down a little bit but again same thing with the foundations 
and also with the powders if i end up not liking some of these they're just going to be rotated with the products that didn't get picked initially and i'm also going to go ahead and keep these two bronzers in here because i did not use them very much milani supercharged cheek and lip multi stick bronze voltage nyx hd studio concealer and this is in the color espresso i do always try to pull one palette i do have a couple other drugstore palettes that i do want to try a little bit more but this is the one i'm going to start with this is the car beauty lightning hour highlighter and blush palette this is what it looks like on the inside i'm going to go ahead and start with the blush so the first one i'm going to pull is this beauty blender liquid whip cream blush in the color cheeky pink only use this once in a full face of first impressions i'm going to mention these two together these are the elf putty blushes they don't put the names on these i actually really like these at the beginning but then i kind of found that they were pulling my makeup off underneath whether i was using them on top of powder or underneath powder so i just feel like i need a validation try i am so excited to try this some more this is the elf primer infused blush in the color always spicy i believe also just haven't tried this a whole lot this is the patrick ta monochrome moment blush in the color she's passionate it's like a very very bright pink then i've also only tried this once but i was a very big fan this is the cover effects monochromatic blush duo and this is in the color spice cinnamon i was not a fan of this color over here but i absolutely loved this color right here so i'm excited to use that some more i'm thinking that maybe i can use this as like an eyeshadow or like maybe even a highlighter then for highlighter this is the most recent one that i have tried this is the iconic london illuminator in the color original i absolutely hated this when i first tried it and i used it in my full face of makeup that i'm getting rid of and i really really liked it it's the only liquid highlighter that i have and then i have this jacqueline cosmetics loose highlighter in the color megawatt and i've also liked this every time that i've tried it there was like a time where i could not put this down once i first got it and then i kind of like fell off of it for a little bit and i also use this in my fall makeup tutorial this is the elf baked highlighter color apricot glow i've only tried it once but this is the only highlighter from elf that i have tried and actually liked for bronzer elf putty bronzer this is in the color of bronzed bell i've only tried this once or twice it's supposed to have a semi matte finish i really don't do a whole lot of bronzing so i'm really trying to like make an effort benefit hula toasted bronzer i really have not used this a whole lot i haven't used this at all this year i don't think i found though that i do not like red undertone bronzers which is so ironic because i'm about to talk about this one this is the juvia's place bronze duo in the color deep dark so this bottom one right here is so like purpley slash red undertoned i can't deal with it but i do think that i am gonna like this color the palette that's lighter than this is too light for me so if i like this enough i mean i will buy it for just this and like use this as like a crease oop 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 use that as a crease color. I had to do some swatching and I actually have to get rid of those three because the two MAC products are discontinued. It Cosmetics, their lipstick, honestly not even sure if they sell it anymore. This is a go-to for me. This is the Burt's Bees Lip Balm in the color Peppermint. I have two of them. I am like a peppermint fiend junkie. I love anything menthol peppermint. This is the Shea Moisture 100% Virgin Coconut Oil Shea Butter Vegan Lip Balm. I tried this in my last fall makeup tutorial that I did and I don't know if I didn't use enough but I felt like it really did not last very long. Before I start my makeup it was gone when I was ready to do my lips. Had to pull a brown lip liner. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics lip liner in the color Toasty. If I like it enough I do want to order a couple more colors because this has been a really nice brown. This is a newer product. This is a MAC lip liner in the color Hover. I'm usually not the biggest fan of pencils we're gonna see if she passes the test anastasia beverly hills liquid lipstick this is in the color in between also just use this in my fall makeup tutorial this is the revlon color stay satin ink liquid lipstick in the color 200 wild ride this was very very pigmented like i didn't even have to put it on my top and bottom lip i put some on the bottom and it was enough for both for some reason i had this in my declutter pile and i don't know why because i really don't even know how i feel about it this is the patrick tom monochrome moment silky lip cream in the color she's confident and i can tell you now i won't like this on its own but i think that i'll like it with a brown lip liner i like pretty much anything with a brown lip liner i feel like everybody definitely has a preference when it comes to nudes some people like more pinky nudes some people like more brown nudes I like more brown nudes. Juvia's Place Liquid Lipstick in the color Bronzed Toast. This also had a very nice silky formula. I know I tried this, but I don't remember what I thought about it. Sometimes when I look at this makeup, it makes me feel like I have dementia because I can like somewhat remember it or I don't remember it at all. NYX Lingerie XXL Liquid Lipstick, the matte version. And this is in the color Low Cut, more of like a lip pencil. This is the Flower Beauty Scribble Stick in the color Bittersweet. I also saved this from um, Full Face products I'm getting rid of. The first time I used it, the formula was so so dry it wasn't even funny lastly for lip products this is the fenty beauty gloss 
in the color hot chocolate. I so wish that I had the cream version of this. It makes my lip combo more brown if I think it's too pink. All right, y'all, we are on the last little container, which is always the most hard for me because I feel like I have so many products that it's hard to use all of them because they're all just bundled up in here. So in here, I keep my pomades, my eyeliners, my eye pencils, and my mascara. So it's really hard to like sort through everything. I haven't found a better organization system yet. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. I feel like it's just easier to keep all the eye stuff together. So we're going to start with these two pomades. First one is the ABH Brow Pomade in the color Ebony. I just want to try this and make sure that I love it as much as I used to because I've been trying a lot of really affordable brow pomades that I really like and I feel like if this is not as good as those and there's no point in me keeping this. I've only used this a couple times. This I used in a full face of independently owned makeup I believe video. This is the Cara Beauty Brow Pomade in the color Ebony. And then I only have two eyeliners, so I'm hoping that I can get good use out of all these. And I really liked both of them the first time I used them. This is the Maybelline Lasting Drama Gel Liner, and this is in the color Blackest Black. I loved this stuff when I used it. I actually had this for over a year before I used it because at the time when I bought it, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, but didn't use eyeliner. But now I do. I really, really liked this. So I'm hoping that I like it as much as I did the first time. I also wanted to like marry this product just from the first time I used it. This is the Ilia Clean Line Liquid Liner in the color Midnight Express. This was so easy to use with eye products. It's really not hard for me to tell if I like them or not. I don't have to use them a whole bunch of times versus like concealers and powders and foundations. You do have to use multiple times because they work together and they're not like independent of each other. It's harder to tell what's doing what. Smashbox Super Fan Fanned Out Mascara. This is a mini. I got it as a gift from my mom. Pat McGrath Labs Fetish Eyes Mascara. But again, I'm gonna give her one last hurrah before we retire her. We got a lot of pencils to go through, so we're gonna go like rapid fire. I did pull this last month, but didn't get the chance to use it a whole lot. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in the color Demolition. I'm gonna mention these two together because they're just different colors. These are the NYX Epic Wear Liners. This one is in the color Pure White, and then this one is in the color Deepest Brown. I've only used this once in a full face of first impressions, and I thought that it was the liquid liner of the Hyper Easy because I really, really like that. This is the Maybelline Hyper Easy Automatic Pencil Liner, and this is in the color Deep Brown. I believe I used this in a full face of Milani makeup. This is the Milani Stay Put Eyeliner in the color 2 Semi Sweet. Morphe Eyeliner Pencil in the color Dimmer. By the way, if you haven't caught on, I do tend to like brown eyeliners more than black. I just feel like black is a little bit too intense for my liking. Lastly, this is the Essence Long Lasting Eye Pencil, and this is in the color Hot Chocolate. Next are eyebrow pencils. This is the Morphe Micro Brow Pencil in the color color Java. Fenty Beauty Brow MVP Ultra Fine Brow Pencil and Styler and this is in the color Black Brown. Oh my gosh, I also loved this product the first time I used it. This is the Huda Beauty Micro Shade Brow Pencil in the color 7 Black Brown. This one is almost on its way to the decluttering bin, but I'm going to give it one more chance. Anastasia Brow Wiz and this is in the color Ebony. One of my very first brow pencils that I ever used and absolutely loved, but I just feel like this product has been duped so many times and the dupes have been better sitting here talking to you guys like it should be in my declutter bin but also talking myself into reasons as to why I need to keep it Charlotte Tilbury brow cheat micro precision brow pencil and this is in the color black brown Juvia's Place I sculpt I shade brow pencil in the color ebony it's a pretty waxy formula but it has really good pigment and after I clean my brows up when using it the first time it was good so like the difference between the brow whiz and this is that this is affordable and I could recommend this to you guys if I like it because you can make it work and it's affordable. LA Girl Shady Slim Brow Pencil in the color Black Brown. I do not remember using this at all. Cover Girl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in the color Soft Brown 710. I was so surprised that I like this as much as I did, if I remember correctly, because it is a soft brown color, but it's a really nice match for my eyebrows. Lastly, we only have one brow gel and I'll probably keep this in here until I find another one. It's literally my only one in my whole collection. This is the Juvia's Place I Sculpt I Shade Brow Gel and this is in the color Ebony. I had never used brow gel until using this and I felt like when I used it it made my brows look so super lifelike. This is a mini overview of all of my products for this month which is way more than I had last month. Let's go ahead and do some makeup and chit chat. Right, guys I went ahead and did my brows and carved out underneath them because I've just accepted the fact that I cannot talk and do my brows at a good pace at the same time. First thing I wanted to talk about is I did add 
add another member to the family. I now have three cats. I have a little tabby and his name is Jimmy Garfield. My boyfriend calls him Garfield, I call him Jimmy. I named him after my grandpa, but it's so funny guys because when I was looking to get a new cat, I told my boyfriend, I was like, I do not want an orange cat. I think they're so ugly. And I was gonna get a little black kitten from a girl that I know, but it kind of just fell through and it didn't work out. And a girl that I used to run cross country with ended up finding the cat that I have now and his brothers and sisters and his mom in a bush outside of their house. So she posted pictures of them and I was like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. So I texted her and I was like, hey, do you still have them? She was like, yeah. I ended up getting one for me and one for my sister. So I have two boys and a girl now, I'm done. I, I told myself I'm capping myself at three. When I was younger, I had a cat and I don't ever remember what happened to her. I think she died. I really don't remember hap what happened to her, but um, we got her for my sister's birthday and we didn't have her for very long. And my mom is actually really allergic to cats. The only thing that we could have was like hamsters and then I had a turtle for a while. My sister somehow talked my dad into getting Kitty, who is my oldest, she's a calico. I've had her since I was in seventh grade. So I've had her for close to six years. I've always said when I move out and I live on my own, I'm gonna have as many cats as I want. But with cats comes responsibility, cleaning cat litter and refilling the food and just all that stuff and the expenses like the vet bill my little one ended up having ear mites really bad so had to pay for that and then had to pay for the medicine and it gets pretty expensive and it's so funny because he's a tabby but he looks like a turtle on the bottom the way his pattern is and then he's like really swirly I was actually able to do a little bit of traveling the past month I was able to go to Michigan twice and then I went to Kings Island for my fall break. It ended up raining a little bit, but it was honestly so much fun, like to just be out of town and to be in new scenery. Am I the only person that like loves staying in hotel rooms? I don't know what it is. I went to Michigan twice because the first time we went, we went to the Michigan IU game, which was so much fun. Oh my gosh. I had never been tailgating before and I had never been to a college football game before, so. Me and my boyfriend went with his sister and her boyfriend and a couple of their friends and it was just so fun. Of course, I was wearing my IU gear because I go to IU and I'm on the Michigan campus. I'm a part of the minority. Luckily, some of their friends had on IU gear, but it was just blue and yellow, blue and yellow, blue and yellow. If you're from Michigan, you would know there's a huge rivalry between Michigan State and Michigan. And my family is a Michigan State family. So my uncles went to Michigan State and then my dad actually went to U of M and Michigan State. It was so funny because when we started dating, my uncle was like, oh, I don't know if he's gonna work out because he comes from a Michigan family. The U of M stadium is the biggest in the United States. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it's gonna be big, whatever. We walk in and I literally was like, I felt this big. There was like 110,000 people there or something. That was super, super fun. And then the weekend after that, we went back because some of my boyfriend's family had a birthday party. So we went to that and that was really fun. It started snowing. I don't know about you guys, but I like the snow for a little bit. Like it's a cute moment for maybe a couple weeks and then I'm over it because it's pretty to look at, but then the more it snows, it starts to get muddy and the ground gets awful and of course the roads are bad. I don't know when, but I know that I had mentioned to you guys that this desk back here, the white one, the main white one that you see that has the glass top, it's a mom desk from Ikea and I absolutely love it. It's like the perfect size for everyday makeup. The glass top just makes it look super, super bougie in my opinion. There's only one nail that holds the bottom platform up and it was bending. So my makeup was falling out of the back of the desk and I was like, okay, hey, this is not an option. This desk probably wasn't built to have so much weight in it because makeup is very heavy. But I was like, I gotta do something about this because I'm not trying to invest in another desk. Like this is perfect, I love it. The back of the drawer, okay? And then this is what the makeup sits on. So it was going like this. Well, I was like, what if I just put hot glue in between that platform in here and squeeze it together? Brand spanking new. I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys and the one in a million chance that one of you guys have this desk or wanna get this desk or having the same problem. 
use hot glue and you'll be fine. The same thing actually happened with my nail polish rack, but it was my dad's fault because he broke it when we were moving it. So the backing of the nail polish rack is all one thing like this and then you have the shelves. Well, the shelves and the backing were separating and I just hot glued them and it was fine. Yeah, I found that living on my own, I have become so DIY, it's not even funny. I would rather try to fix something myself before paying somebody else to do it if I have the ability to do it. I'm gonna be really risky and do a greenish, bluish type of look. I I know that I mentioned that I had started doing my own nails. I was gonna try to shoot to do them every two weeks, but I actually worked for the first time in I think over a month a couple days ago and literally all of the gel polish fell off. So I was like, okay, we're just gonna have to start doing it once a week. Oh yeah, that is cute. I'm not always gonna work, but I do like my fingernails to look somewhat presentable because you guys look at them while I do my makeup. So I know if it were me watching because I'm OCD, I would be focusing on the chipped nail polish. I guess since I was just talking about how I worked for the first time, I will talk to you guys about what it was like not working for so long. There's multiple reasons that I decided to stop working and I mentioned all those to you guys in my last video. Oh yeah, that's pretty. So if you want like more in depth as to why I made that decision, then go check that video out. If you were in college and you have the means to not work, and especially if you're going into medical, don't work. I have never been as happy as I am right now. I don't feel overwhelmed all the time. I don't feel super tired all the time. Since I stopped working, I've been able to stay up for more hours in the day. So like I used to get up at 8 a.m. and I would be in bed by 9 p.m. So I was up for what, about 13 hours? Now I can be up from like 7 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. At 10.30 p.m. not even be tired but be like, okay, it's time to go to bed. I just feel like my energy level is so much higher. The way that my two week rotation was is when I would get done working my weekend, I would work Wednesday and then after that Wednesday, I had six days off. You'd think that it'd be nice to have the six days off, but during the six days, and even when I had just had a couple days off, all I would think about is how much I was dreading going back to work. So I couldn't even enjoy my time off because I was like, ugh, I gotta go back to work and you know, can't even enjoy life and be in the moment. This time span showed me how quickly and how fast you can fall out of love with your job and how you can lose your passion. I saw some post the other day that was, you know, like basically just saying pray for healthcare workers because you know, a lot of us are just struggling to have passion and a lot of people that are in healthcare right now are forgetting why they're in healthcare. I only worked for four hours, so I didn't work a whole shift. I wasn't dreading going to work. I was actually excited to go work and see my coworkers and to see my patients that I hadn't seen in a month. And I just think that that time off for me was so crucial. It was just nice to have some time off, especially with being in school. These wings are long. Before we get into the complexion, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the new hairstyle, what's been up with it. I recently saw my hairstylist for the first time in a very, very long time, and she was kind of telling me, you know, your hair is really healthy and it's really curly, but if you would get it cut consistently, like every three months or every two months, it would be so much healthier because your ends are what's dragging your hair down. Cause I did, I had really bad split ends. My curls weren't bouncing the same way that they used to. With age, no matter if you have curly hair or straight hair, your hair does change. It becomes thinner, it becomes thicker, um, it becomes more curly, it becomes less curly. And I feel like my hair has not been as curly as what it used to be, which makes me so sad. Cause I'll look at pictures and be like, oh my gosh, my hair looked so great. I'm telling you guys, after I got that haircut, I have been so happy with the way that my hair has been. It just feels so much healthier, it feels shinier, and it's a lot easier to wash now because my ends aren't super dead, doesn't tangle easily. I'm sharing this with you guys because I used to do braid outs all the time, especially when I first started doing my own hair. If I would get bored with my curly hair, I would just do a braid out for a couple weeks, and I have been loving the way that my hair looks. It allows me to kind of change the texture of my hair. You see it's kind of more crimped right now instead of being spiral. I'm able to actually do more with it. I'm able to style it in a lot more different ways versus when my hair is curly, it's really either down or up in a messy bun because it's just so textured that it's hard to get it to lay flat and you know, not look crazy and frizzy. If I want, I can pull these two pieces back. I can put it up, half up, half down. I can put it in a low ponytail and it not look crazy. I can do one of those clips clip my hair up and clip it in the back. I didn't want you guys to think I had like chemically changed my hair or anything. This is just what I've been liking as of recently. I don't know when I'm gonna go back to 
wearing my hair in its natural state because right now I really like the way that it is and it's actually a lot easier to manage this way. What I do is I braid my hair up every night and if I'm not going anywhere, I don't even have to mess with my hair. I have tried the two strand twist outs in the past and I've never liked how they come out. I don't know if it's like my curl pattern or if I'm doing it wrong. I just prefer the braid outs over the twist outs. I'm really excited to share with you guys the products that I've been using and upcoming favorites and let you guys know what products I've been using to achieve the braid out look. We are currently in the middle of November, which is so crazy to think about. I feel like we were just at the beginning of February, March. Like where did the time go? Where did the summer go? The leaves are starting to fall off the trees. It's getting really, really cold outside. I don't mind the cold, but only for so long. It gets very irritating to me very quickly. I don't know about you guys, but daylight savings never really affected me. It was almost just like, oh, I get an extra hour of sleep. Oh, sex. I'm losing an hour of sleep. But this year, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because I live on my own and maybe I'm noticing it more now, but I'm not vibing with it. Like at six o'clock, I feel so lethargic. I feel like it's 10 o'clock at night. And of course it's pitch black out. I do run in the morning a couple times a week. We'll go at like five or 6 a.m. I feel like we're running at midnight because it's so dark. I have a story for you guys and I'm only telling you guys this hopefully that way you do not go through the same thing that I did. When I moved out of my parents' house, during that time, we knew that we wanted to go to the Cayman Islands in December. So all of our passports were expired. So, you know, we were like, let's just get it out the way now, you know, especially with COVID and everything going on. We didn't want to be in a rush to get our passports just have it taken care of. When I moved out of my house, when I went to go apply for my passport, I put what I thought was my new apartment address on the form. So I did that in May. Come to find out, the day I move into the apartment, which I think I've told you guys this before, the lady gave me the wrong address. And what I mean by that is my apartment complex sits on two different streets. So she gave me the, the right apartment number, but it was the wrong street in the wrong building. I really honestly didn't even think about it until probably like the middle of the summer when I was like, oh my gosh, I put the wrong address on my passport. I really didn't think that it would be that big of a deal. So what I did is I went over to the leasing office and I, you know, told the people what the situation was and just pretty much asked them, you know, if anybody is living in that unit, please tell them to look out for my passport. And if you could just deliver it to me, that would be awesome. The people agreed to that. Months and months and months go by, okay? We're talking like October at this point. It's kind of weird that I haven't gotten my passport yet because my mom and dad and my sister had all gotten theirs and they applied after I did. I applied before anybody did. There's a website that you can look up and track your passport on. And every time I would put in my information, it would be like information not available. I went to the post office and I asked them, hey, what should I do? They were like, well, you can try to call the passport place, but they don't have anybody there right now because of COVID. They don't have anybody working. I leave the second week of December and we are now into October and I still do not have this passport. And at the time they're saying that estimations to receive a passport are at least three months. Luckily, I was able to talk to somebody on the phone. She would not talk to me unless I got the money order number for my passport. I was like, well, I don't have that. So what do you want me to do? She was like, well, I can't talk to you unless you get that. Whenever you pay with a debit card or anything other than cash or a check at the post office for a passport, they send in a money order. So I was like, okay, well, let me see if I can go to the post office and if they can give me the money order number. So I go to the post office and of course, the guy tells me, well, I can't help you because I'm not the one who did your passport you are gonna have to wait for the person that did do your passport to help you because they're the only person that can access your information. So luckily, my dad is good friends with the guy that did do my passport and he was like, he's working tomorrow, so just come in tomorrow and he will be able to help you. I tell him the situation and he's like, well, you're gonna have to give me a while because that was over three months ago, so I'm gonna have to manually go through every single transaction that I've done since then and find your money order number. Well, he finds my money order number. I call the passport place back and I, you know, explain to them the situation. I said, the lady that I talked to said she would not even give me any information regarding the state of my passport unless I gave her this money order number. And the lady on the phone was like, well, I don't know what she was talking about because we can't help you. Long story short, my best chance was to pay for a new passport and hope that it comes in time. 
If you know anything about passports, they are not cheap at all. I reapplied for my passport and it was even more expensive than it was the first time because I had to pay for expedited shipping there and back and I had to pay for a tracking number and all that stuff. At the post office, what they think happened, they think the mail carrier saw my name and knew that I did not live there and sent it back to the passport place. But the passport place doesn't even know where it is if they do have it. So I don't know if they got a bin of like missing or missing or unclaimed passports just sitting wherever they are. We're just hoping that the passport comes in time. Guys, I cannot make this up. I cannot, literally cannot make this up. It is Saturday right now and I'm sitting here editing this video. So yesterday, me and my mom and my sister were out and I was like, I wonder where, you know, my new passport is just in progress if it's been processed or anything like that so i check on the website and it popped up that it was approved so i was like oh awesome like that's amazing i sent my passport to my parents house all my mail goes to my parents house i've had people tell me that sometimes packages get stolen here because they just leave them outside sometimes so i just have all my packages sent to the house here's a uh, jimmy so anyways it's perfect timing my mom calls me later on that day on friday yesterday and she was like oh my gosh your passport came i was like no freaking way like that's so awesome i was excited because now i can go on the trip this is the part i cannot make up i went running this morning and i saw the mail carrier and that she had just put the mail in the mailbox so i was checking it and literally on top of my stack of mail is my old passport from May. So I don't know where it went, what journey this passport has been on. So I had now have two passports. So I'm like double secured. So I had to give you guys an update on that. You know, the more and more I'm using this Beauty Blender blush, the more I'm just like, I don't know if I'm really here for it or not. I don't know if that's looking so white because I used a lot of powder. I tend to be a little heavy handed. Despite how busy this time of the year is for me, I absolutely love, 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 love the Thanksgiving Christmas holiday season. It is like my favorite. I think this time of the year tends to bring out the best in people, even the grumpiest people, I think tend to be a little bit more happy during this time of year. Um, it's just like a time to celebrate family and being thankful for everything that you have. Like, I just love everything about it. I've always loved Christmas. A lot of people, when you ask them, what's their favorite part of the holiday season, they'll say it's the food. Or like, you know, Thanksgiving, it's the food. For me, it really is being with my family because I have been lucky enough to grow up really, really close to pretty much all of my family. I come from a very loud, funny, comical family, so it's just nothing but smiles. I kind of secretly feel bad for Thanksgiving because literally they already have Christmas stuff hanging up in the stores. As soon as Halloween's over, it's like we completely skip over Thanksgiving and go to Christmas. Does that bother you guys? Because it low key bothers me. By the way, my makeup's kind of hanging on weird in this area right here because I just waxed my eyebrows. So that's what that is. You know, I just feel like the society we live in today is like so fast paced and like you really don't have time to digest anything that's going on. And that literally, I think, is why it upset me when I saw all of the Christmas stuff. And it's like, where did the Thanksgiving season go? I still have all my fall decorations up. I actually really do not plan on even decorating for Christmas until the day after Thanksgiving. And I also feel like I am such a Thanksgiving rooter because when I lived at home, we still do have this gorgeous, huge, I mean, probably 15 foot Christmas tree. My dad used to pay a lady to come over and decorate our house for Christmas every year. This lady moved away out of town. So my dad was like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? So he kept the decorations up all year long. So at my house, the Christmas decorations that are up now have been up for over a year. I feel like now that I live on my own, I'm like, I'm not gonna decorate until I want to. And I was like so sick and tired of living in Christmas all year long. I don't know, I just feel like when you decorate so early, it like dilutes the joy and the warmth of it. You know, you don't really get to enjoy it. And that's why like I love seasonal things so much, like pumpkin pie. I will not eat pumpkin pie unless it's fall time and unless it's Thanksgiving time because if you ate it all year round, you wouldn't be as excited to eat pumpkin pie. Guys, I'm actually proud of myself because I feel like my bronzer game is getting a little bit better. I found that with bronzer, the reason I wasn't really loving it is because I was using colors that were more red undertone. I really don't like the way that the red looks on my skin. I like just more of the cool espresso brown type of colors like this. This is what I use on my face. Just truly brown. Also I wanted to mention the show that I cannot stop watching. Leave suggestions down below for shows that you guys love because I think I need a break from the show because I've been watching it so much. 
I have been loving Big Brother. One of my other favorite shows too is The Challenge, which is very similar to Big Brother. It's just a lot more physical, but it is political also. Really the main difference between Big Brother and The Challenge is that The Challenge tends to bring some of the same people back over and over, which I personally like because you really get to know the people that are on the show. You know, you don't just see them for one season, you see them for a couple seasons. You know them before they have kids and then after they have kids and get married. I have tried to watch The Bachelor and The Bachelor Bachelorette on multiple occasions and I just cannot get into it. I don't know what it is, but me and that show just do not vibe. On Monday, I went to the chiropractor for the first time and oh my gosh, I think I had shared with you guys earlier on in the summer that I was having some really, really bad neck pain and back pain. So ironically, most of that pain was actually coming from working. So, you know, me not working has obviously helped, but I still do have a little bit of pain. When I stopped going to physical therapy two times a week and I got discharged, I started getting massages every two weeks just to keep my body in good shape. I was telling my massage therapist, I really just want you to massage like right back here in the middle of your neck where you bend right on the bone, like not around it. She was like, I really think that you should go see a chiropractor after you leave here because she may be able to help alleviate more of that pain because it's a little unusual that it's coming from right on your spine. I actually had tried to go see a chiropractor at the beginning of the summer and he told me he wouldn't touch me because I was so tight. That's why I went to the doctor and therefore got enrolled in physical therapy. The girl who does my massages is also my trainer and we run together. I go to the chiropractor that she recommended to me, literally took two minutes, not even that. She was so super quick. I think I was just scared because I've seen videos and honestly what bothered me the most going into it was like actually hearing the cracking and stuff. The lady was very thorough, like before she would actually readjust me, she'd be like, I'm gonna pull and it's gonna feel a little bit like this. I feel a lot looser. I feel like the times in the day where my pain is the worst is when I wake up, if I sleep wrong, then it bothers me. Or if I'm sitting down at the computer for prolonged periods of time and just not moving my neck very much. I think that from now on, every time or every other time I get a massage, I'm just gonna go to the chiropractor right after and just let her adjust me. I was actually kind of proud of myself. That's something that I was so scared to do for a long time, but I kind of finally realized, you know, I'm in so much pain that I'll do just about anything to get some relief. I only have like three more weeks in this semester, which seems so crazy. I feel like I just started college yesterday. I love college so much more than high school. The thought of even going to school for eight hours a day makes me want to vomit. That class that I showed you guys I was failing, I now have a 76% in, which if you want the whole spiel on that, then go check out last month's video. I'm really not super freaked out that I have a C in there because it's only worth one credit out of the 140 that I need for my nursing degree. So I can take one C. All right, guys, that is perfect timing because I am done with today's look. We only have one more shot my stash for the whole year. And then after that, we are moving on to the best of beauty for 2021. If you guys love these videos, I do have a whole playlist that I will link down below in the description box or up here if I have room for tags. I probably won't. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.